problem I was given was to create a trivia game from scratch. And to solve this problem, this challenge, I broke it into three smaller problems, and that's to create a question and answer system, which includes a text file with questions and answers and a way to read those, a graphical user interface, which basically handles all input and output, and then also game logic, which is basically transitioning between different stages, finding a way of scoring everything. The structure I used, I programmed it entirely in Java from scratch. I generally took an object-oriented approach. Uh, I used encapsulation, and then there was some inheritance, though of course I only used it where it benefited the program. Um, and I put comments in the code to help me identify the structure and how I'm programming it, and I made self-documenting variables so that I could more easily make it. The trivia questions I pulled from the FBLA website, and I typed them directly into a text file separate by tabs. The file reader, whenever you call the method, it calls the question number along with it. So then it goes through a loop, and then it reads lines of the file, reads tabs until it has read the correct amount, and then it returns a string, can, uh, an array of strings containing the question, the answer, and the correct answer. So then there's also the GUI. I put that into, broke that down into smaller problems, and that's to create graphics for the graphical user interface, which is just designing everything. I designed that all in GIMP. And I had to create a, a display mess method for each game mode. And I wanted to create clickable buttons so that it's more interactive. And I also let, wanted to allow keyboard input. So for the clickable buttons, I created objects. And there are two PNG files, one for when the pro whenever you have the mouse active over it, and one for when it is inactive. And it Clicks are processed by input, so if you have the mouse within the region of the button, then it, in, it goes through the input method, and based on what the game mode is and where the coordinates of the mouse are, it does actions according to that. And then you can also press A, B, C, and D on the, in, on the keyboard, and that's handled by the input method, and you can pro also press escape to exit the program. The display method has, each method has other display methods, one is main menu mode, two is instructions, three is game, four is score, and if you if the game mode variable is set to zero, it will exit. I used JFrame and JPanel, which are just basic things to set up, set, set up the application, and then I used a loop of paint component, which every time it looped through, based on what the display mode was, if it was like if it's in game mode one, then we'll call the display mode for main menu. If it's in game mode two, it'll call the display mode for instructions, and so on. And if it if the variable is zero, then it tells the program to exit when it goes through. The initial mode is game mode one, which is main menu. There are three clickable buttons, one for new game instructions and one to exit the game. Instructions just displays the basic text of how to run the game, and it has one clickable button which will return you to the main menu, so it sends it back to game mode one. So the game first, whenever it goes into game mode, it retrieves the question, it then displays the question on at the top. And whenever it retrieves the question, it calls the input method, and it, um, it sets it to a, an array of strings. And there is also a timer method it uses. It displays that at the top of the screen. And there are four clickable answer buttons. Those are each objects which it displays. And the text is sent along whenever you create the object, and it displays those there. Scoring, you get 25,000 points if you answer the question within two seconds. You get 10,000 divided by the amount of last time if it takes longer. So if it takes 10 seconds to answer a question, then you only get 1,000 points. But you also get combo points. So for if you get two questions right in a row, you get 5,000. And if you get three, you get an additional 10,000. So that can add up to a lot of points. And you lose 10 points if you have 10 or fewer correct answers. You lose a considerable amount of points. Or something. So the program flow, first it goes into game mode 1, and it displays the main menu. And it calls the display method each time for the loop. And then if you click new game, it processes through input, but it should go to game mode 3. It creates a new game object and switches it to game mode 3. So then it, dis it calls the, once you switch to game mode 3, it each, for each time a new question pops up, it calls the, it sends the variable to the method and it puts it to a string, so it displays the question and the four clickable buttons. 
And then once you've answered all the questions, it takes you to the score screen for that game and it displays the score, which is kept track of all along and then it, well, it adds up the score while it's in game mode. And it also displays the number, number correct, which is stored as a variable as you get them correct. And then you can click anywhere to return to the main menu, so that sets the game mode variable back to one and it starts displaying the main menu again. And then anytime you can press exit program and it will end. Questions? Um, I'm just curious. On the since the questions have four answers and one's correct, how'd you come up with the other three that were wrong? Did you just create the answers? Uh, yeah, I kind for some of them like with the like the names of people, I took names of incorrect people, like when asked who's the president, I also took then and added the secretary and all that. And then some of them I did just make up something. What would be the the usefulness of, of a game? Uh, it would, it it would allow you to test your knowledge of FBLA in general. And then ultimately, what's the end of objective? You have a score. You want to get as many points as possible. Okay. Um, I'm sorry if you explained this, but do the point values ever change as the game goes on, or does it stay constant? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, um, there's a timer that it uh, goes through. If, um, if, it's, if you take longer than two seconds, then you get 10,000 divided by the amount of time. But aside from that, it doesn't change. But you do get common points for multiple correct and wrong. And also, I didn't mention, um, I'd say the hardest challenge was scalability. I wanted to make it so that you could change the window size and wouldn't just be at one fixed size. So um, I, to do that, I basically divided by a number based on the width, and that divide, made it into eight regions that the buttons would be on. That made it easier for me to decide where to place things and how to interact. And did you achieve that goal? Does it scale up? Yes.